Hi, good morning. It's Jim from Math Star Observatory. Um, wanted to talk about the topic of, you know, the majority of people in most of the Western worlds. I'm talking about Europe, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, you know, um, pretty much a lot of the world which has got a lot of technology and, um, you know, we're not so much talking about the uh, third world countries. You know, why is there such a massive um, behaviour of feeling out of control and not being able to do anything about the problems which we are facing globally? Um, before we get into it, I'd like, just like to say a uh, big thank you to a couple of people uh, who over the last few days have um, you know, pledged a bit of support for the observatory. You know, yesterday we did a video and we had 1,700 views on that video. And out of that, you know, we managed to encourage just two people. The conversion rate is, uh, you know, is just mind-boggling. You know, two people, um, you know, chose to support, you know, the observatory and uh, appreciate exactly what we do. <clears throat> but this is the world we're living in now, guys. You know, and I, I sometimes feel uh, powerless to change what's going on in the world. And I think individually we all feel the same. So I'm not pointing at the finger at anybody and saying, you know, you're behaving differently to me because sometimes I feel exactly the same. And it is very easy uh, as opposed to get engaged in protests and... Um, you know, methods of fighting back, you know, the lies that our governments are pushing. And, um, you know, we know where all this comes from. <clears throat> but we, if we don't start to do something about this, as a whole, are going to wake up to a, a world which we won't recognise. And this is going to happen in the not too distant future. You know, we're all standing on the track and the train is coming and unfortunately the logical thing here would be to get off the track so that we didn't get hit but you know I'm looking down the track at the train coming and I'm seeing a lot of people get hit by the train simply because they felt they hadn't got the power to avoid you know to get out of the way of it so they just got hit by it if you put this analogy into what's happening today it's very true you know we know the lies that have been told about co2 we look back in the past history of co2 and the reason why i'm talking about co2 is because a lot of policy is being driven to change the way we live in this world it affects everything guys i was watching christian the ice age farmer um talk about you know how <clears throat> they are actively going out for farms and offering the farmers subsidies not to grow their cattle or rear their cattle. And, you know, the reason why they, they want to do this is so that, you know, they can cut CO2 emissions. So CO2 is a very important point of this topic. It seems to be at the heart of what these politicians are driving in order to get their agendas passed. And if we just look at CO2 and the truths behind it. We know it's lies, but we're accepting it as a whole globally now. It is a complete lie. There is no truth to CO2 changing the climate and there is no truth to it being a, um, a problem that mankind has created because simply if we have only been as a species here 42,000 years how could we have how could the climate have raised the co2 in past history many many times you know i get the equipment out <coughs> uh, various parts uh, various pieces of equipment uh, every week or so and one of those pieces of equipment is the CO, atmospheric co2 detector and you know we're measuring um on average 420 
to 450 parts per million. <coughs> and if we look at the history of CO2, we will see that you know it has been a lot higher than this many, many times. And we're talking before even Homo sapiens was here 42,000 years ago. CO2, at one point in the Earth's history, was the majority of the gas in the atmosphere. And over, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, it was scrubbed out of the atmosphere by natural processes of chemical water troughs and other bacteria in the oceans that scrubbed it and absorbed the CO2 out of the atmosphere and in turn started to produce oxygen which then set up you know as you know history uh, although we're led to believe you know allowed then for you know creatures to live on on you know continents and then you know through evolution if you want to believe that you know, uh, we have come to this point where Homo sapiens are on this planet and now, um, you know, thriving as we are. A lot has changed in 50 years, in my view, and uh, I think as a species that we're really struggling uh, to, to absorb what we've learned already and and cope with it. And, you know, if we look at it in stages and just look at this last 10 years, this last stage, the last 10 years, the amount of technology that has come about, we've just not been able to grasp. It's come about too quick and the technology is too high tech <coughs> that we are struggling <coughs> to, um, you know, cope with it. And nobody seems to, you know, be taking this into consideration. And, you know, it is sad that, you know, what is changing the policy, changing our lives, is based on information that is incorrect. That CO2 is causing global warming and in turn changing the climate that we are seeing today. Here at the observatory, you know, we've we've been now 11 years in and more recently over the last four years, you know, we've been building a lot of equipment <coughs> and encouraging, you know, our citizen scientists around the world to join in and gather that information so that we can bring it back here to the UK, process it and put it up on the web for you guys. You know, following uh, the rarest anomaly that humanity has ever witnessed take place it's a very strange uh, time that we're living in because you know this anomaly has chose to come about now in our time and there's a lot of different facets to this anomaly um, that that concern me and you know I've brought that to your attention one being that this anomaly is over a half a million years overdue and we know uh, that it coincides with something also unfortunate, the Grand Solar Minimum. And both of these, weakening of the magnetosphere and the Grand Solar Minimum, low solar output, weakening the heliosphere, allow the same scenario to increase, which is cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere, interacting with molecules, and in turn, you know, creating situations where uh, we have more water vapour condensing as a result of cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere, creating more cloud conden condensation, and, you know, that has affected the jet streams. You know, this is more along the lines of what really has changed our climate over the last 30 years. And we can see that there are, you know, direct correlations with the uptick in the magnetic pole migration over the northern hemisphere you know in that you know from 1840 to the 1990s it had migrated only 500 miles but from 1990 to 2021 it's migrated 1200 miles over the last 30 years is where we've witnessed the change in climate and that cannot be no by no coincidence you know this is just a couple of the facets that we've looked at 
of the changes that are taking place as a result of a grand solar minimum and you know the earth going through another magnetic reversal and whilst all these anomalies are taking place and our climate is shifting on our earth <clears throat> at the same time you know there are our own activities and the activities mainly of these politicians that are not being held accountable for their manifestos and their promises before they're elected. I'll just give a couple of examples. I mean, here in the UK, um, the manifesto is something that a party uh, promises, um, you know, the people that vote, that if they're elected, they will do that. But there is no legal binding for, you know, that party once they're in power to, you know, to fulfil on their promises. Um, we saw something similar in the 2020 elections in the United States with Joe Biden. He was asked to remember <clears throat> um, whether he would do something about Saudi Arabia King, um, you know, killing one of the um, journalists. And he said he would do something about it. You know, uh, this he would take, you know, a serious approach to doing something about that. And now... You know, what we're in coming out of the White House is, you know, there is going to be a calibration in the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States. And uh, we know what that means, don't we? Uh, I remember also um, Donald Trump talking about Saudi Arabia uh, with regards to how much money Saudi Arabia was going to purchase in weapons off them. So uh, Donald Trump said, look, is the deal. Saudi Arabia are probably going to spend billions of pounds on buying American arms. And it's either us that sells them or they go to somewhere like Russia or China and buy those arms. And this, I think you'll agree with me, is exactly the mentality of a drug dealer. Uh, when he's asked, why are you selling drugs? You know, haven't you got a conscience? Well, he says, well, Come on, let's face it. These people want to buy the drugs. And if they don't buy the drugs from me, they're going to buy them from somebody else. It's, it's a terrible mentality that we see <clears throat> politicians use. Um, but the main thing is, is that I don't want to be one of these people that stand on the track and allow the train to hit me and you know my family and my loved ones. And I don't want to see that happen to anyone, you guys out there. I don't want to see that happen to you and your loved ones. But we are stuck in a behavioural pattern at the moment where we are too heavily concentrating on our own units. And, you know, that's a good thing because, you know, we have to look after ourselves first. And then when we're strong and, you know, we feel that we've got a bit of extra effort we can look after others but we're not doing that at all and you know i'd love to know you know your opinions on this in the comments section uh today i will definitely read and try to respond as many as i can but do you agree with me you know the majority of the people feel powerless to act <clears throat> and you know although most of us know about the lies that's taking place in a lot of the governments around the world right now. Why is it that we're not doing something about it? Why are we just turning a blind eye to it? And, you know, is it a good thing? Is it going to help us? Are we going to benefit from this behaviour? Because it's a direct infringement, what we're allowing to take place right now on our democracy. Are you aware of that? And, you know, I want to remind you of what our ancestors recently over the last couple of hundred years have actually, you know, lost through trying to keep that democracy. And, you know, we have, through this pandemic, seen massive infringements on our freedoms and our democracy. And we've witnessed how the law has been modified in order to take those freedoms off us. And, you know, this may be a genuine pandemic. It may not be. It may have been, you know, um, artificially created. But what I will say is that there are a lot of people in this world that have taken advantage of the situation and profited from it. 
and also steered a course for the whole of humanity on this planet in another direction and you know if we think that we haven't coped with the level of technological advancement that we've got at this point in the last 10 years then when we really wake up to what has been changed just in the last two years it's going to be devastating we're not going to quite grasp how we lost so much and how we have ended up in this situation so I'll, I'll leave you with those thoughts you know the, the main thing here is is that why are we just sitting by allowing it to take place you know why are we just in, in a way giving up I'm really interested to see your um, comments in the section later on today and you know I'll mention the link down there if you want to help support uh, some of the activities that the observatory do um, you know I hope you do realize that we are a little bit more proactive than a lot of other YouTube channels in the fact that we don't just talk you know talking's good uh, but you know it as, you know it requires actions as well and that's what we've done and tried to do and hopefully continue to to do uh, with regards to you know getting that equipment out to more citizen scientists around the world and bringing more data back on the real anomaly uh, that is changing the climate in our world so if you want to help support that the links are down there and you know I just want to say you know guys um, you know try and have a great day with your family you know, and if you can raise some of the subjects that we've touched on in this video, you know, just try and get their opinions on it. So, you know, with that, um, I think the only thing to say is what I usually do, and that is take care of yourselves. And as always, bye for now.